Eclect comes from the word eclectos, meaning picked out from the others. This reminds me of the popular building toy known as Legos. One of the toys that my children and their parents enjoyed at play was the ever popular box of Legos. With Legos, building fun could last for hours, transforming colored blocks into elaborate dwellings, buildings, machines, people. I've even used Legos in management and leadership training to represent concepts and to conduct team building activities. All ages seem to enjoy a box of Legos. The actions used in playing with Legos demonstrates the component parts of the adjective eclectos. Ek meaning from and lectos meaning pick up. So in playing with Legos, you're picking up suitable building pieces from a pile of building pieces to create something new. This is, in a sense, what God does when he picks us out of a pile of many others that he could have chosen. He selects us to be his chosen pieces or vessels to do his pleasure on earth. The elect lady was a vessel chosen by God. The word elect comes from eclectos, which in the basic sense means picked out or chosen. When the term is applied to an individual or to a Christian, as it was applied to the elect lady, the word elect can also mean the best of its kind or class, excellent, preeminent. The elect lady was therefore the best of her kind. She was excellent. She stood out from the rest. This is the philosophy behind having an eclectic style. An eclectic style in music, for example, results from taking the best features from each type of music, the compositional techniques of jazz harmonies, the fingering technique from classical masterpieces, the soul of gospel, and blending them to form one's unique style. That's eclectic. In the book, Second John, the elder of the church, who was John, has written a letter to a lady whom he addresses as the elect lady. In the same sentence, John refers to her children, stating that they were raised in the tradition of excellence and steadfastness which was provided by their mother. This compliment to the elect lady answers the question posed in Jeremiah 13, 20, and is also applicable to us today. And that statement, that question is, where is thy flock, thy beautiful flock? In the New Testament, the only time the word lady is used is in John's letter to the elect lady. Here is the word that is used. Because of her witness, she was loved by all that knew the truth of the gospel. They represented all segments of people who knew and believed the gospel, all denominations perhaps. They may have differed, but they all agreed about one thing, that this woman knew the gospel and the Lord of the gospel, who is Jesus Christ. No mention was made of her husband. Perhaps she was a single parent, a widow, a divorcee, or an estranged wife. At any rate, she appears to have had no husband. But her story tells us that you can still be considered an elect lady, your children can be blessed, and you can be a blessing to others and named among the faithful if you are elect of the Lord. In verse 4, John says he rejoiced greatly when he found of her children that they walked in truth. Some contend that the term of her children means some of her children. However, the term is really referring to the trait of walking in the truth, saying that this trait emanates from her children. Therefore, the verse is saying, I rejoice greatly when I found this to be true of your children that they are now continuously walking in the truth as we have been commanded by God the Father. He pleads with her not to give her a new commandment, but just to encourage her to continue what they had started from the beginning, to love each other after the manner of Christ. Why? So that as many deceivers, in fact even the Antichrist, would come 
and questioned the witness of Jesus Christ in the flesh, that she and her children would remain steadfast or not let it change or sway their beliefs. For if Christ did not come in the flesh, then we have no remission for our sins. We're still guilty and separated from God by our sins. We would still need to offer sacrifices for our sins on the altar. We would still deserve to be punished by death when we sin. So in summary, eklektos is an adjective which means picked out or chosen by God. Christians are called or chosen by God for select purposes. The Messiah was called elect because he was appointed to be the one-time sin sacrifice for all of our sins. And eklektos means the best of its kind, excellence, preeminence, and it is applied to certain individual Christians. This discussion was sourced from the Blue Letter Bible, Dictionary and Word Search for Eclectos, Strong's 1588, and from the Holy Bible, the book of 2 John. Oftentimes we have our plates full, and we believe that we have done enough, endured enough, suffered enough, been through enough, and our list of to-dos is even greater than our ability to accomplish them all. But with knowing the principle of being chosen, selected, or being an elect lady of God, you can be assured that whatever he has placed upon you, he has equipped you to be able to handle. He has gifted you with specific talents, abilities, knowledge, skills that when brought to bear can be not only a blessing for you and your family and your children, which is the primary uh, responsibility, but it can also be a blessing and a source of inspiration to others. So in all things that we uh, find on our plate and on our to-do list, remember you are an elect lady of God.